Hello everyone and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe and today we have so much to discuss. Not only has Travis Kelsey broken his silence, it's probably too dramatic of a phrase, but he is discussing his weekend at Coachella with Taylor Swift. We have Easter eggs to break down, the library installation in Los Angeles, the news that we are getting a music video on Friday. There's just, we have so much to break down, so much to discuss. So let's just jump right in. Okay, first thing is first, we are discussing Travis Kelsey talking about his Coachella weekend with his brother Jason on the New Heights podcast. Travis, who is always the king of never giving you everything. He never steps over the line. He never says too much, but he just gives you enough to make you feel like, I don't know, like you learn something new. It's just, he's a master at all of this. He really, truly is. But obviously Jason asked Travis about his weekend because everybody saw Travis (laughs) and Taylor Swift at Coachella. And Travis talked about how much he loves live music, how much he loves just Coachella in general. And the fact that Coachella is a music festival with all different types of music. So as a music lover, if you like pop, if you like hip hop, if you like rock, if you like singer songwriter, whatever it is, you can find an artist, people there for you that you can connect with, enjoy, et cetera, et cetera. Travis also revealed that he is now a new Jack Antonoff stand. So we, of course, saw Taylor and Travis side stage during Jack's band, The Bleachers, during their performance. Taylor, of course, one of Jack Antonoff's best friends. He's been her major collaborator, co-songwriter, um, producer, all that stuff for, gosh, I mean, almost 10, I guess now a decade they've been working together. So they've obviously been super close. But Travis, I don't think was or didn't really know much about Jack or the music that he made prior to dating Taylor Swift. But this is what he said about his time watching the bleachers at Coachella. It was also good to go and see a few new bands who I wasn't really that familiar with and just become an absolute lover of their music because of how they performed and how they captivated the crowd and got everybody into it. Like the bleachers and Jack Antonoff absolutely ripped it. I had so much fun seeing him go nuts with the guitar and all and all of his boys. He had two sax players, two drummers, two guitars, and they just ripped it. It was so much fun to watch. And you know what? This this on its face may, might be like, oh yeah, Travis likes Jack's music. That's, that's fun. But there's something really sweet, I think, about if you're in a relationship. Obviously, Taylor loves Jack, very, very close to him. And there's something very sweet about Travis, who maybe wasn't familiar with Jack, didn't really know much about his music, whatever, like welcoming him and his music into his life and really like loving and enjoying it too. Um, I think that's probably really sweet. It's always nice when your partner appreciates and enjoys what your friends do and what your friends are good at and what they put out and all that kind of stuff. So very, very sweet. Love it. Jason also then went on, because as he does, as the older brother, went on to poke Travis a little bit um, just because of how public, shall we say, their time at Coachella was. Jason said, we know who you went with. We've seen the pictures. And then Travis said she was supporting New Heights. Obviously a nod to the fact that Taylor was rocking the New Heights hat throughout the entire weekend. And in fact... New Heights being smart, being the business people that they are, they restocked that that hat like immediately. It sold out in minutes. They restocked it again this week, resold or out, you know, sold out immediately again. Um, and uh, and yeah, so I mean, I think we'll be seeing a lot of Swifties that are rocking the green New Heights hat um, around town. So love to see that. Love to hear him break it all down. But enough of Travis and Coachella and all that stuff. We are now getting into um, everything that Taylor has revealed, shared with us over the last couple of days, specifically the video she posted to her Instagram yesterday on Tuesday, April 16th, which not only announced to us that there is a music video coming out on Friday, April 19th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. But there was a lot of Easter eggs that people were trying to figure out. Uh, The video starts in like a 
room with the Midnight's album on the table, the clock set to 2 p.m. We'll get back to that. It then kind of takes you through this hallway. It almost looks like a, I don't know, an office building of some sort. It takes you into a room that's has a little, um, has a sign that says that the torture poets department. And then it kind of leads you to a calendar where then it says um, that there is a new music video coming out April 19th, 8 p.m. Below that message, it has it had 14 tally marks. Now, this is obviously a clue. This is obviously, like she would not put 14 tally marks just because this means something. People think it either means the music video will be for the 14th song on the track listing, which is um, the smallest man who ever lived, or the 14 tally marks symbolize 14 days, AKA two weeks, AKA Fortnite, featuring Post Malone. I go back and forth as to what I feel like this means. I think obviously she's done a lead single before that has been a feature song. Me, <laughs> the lead single off of Lover featured Brendan Yuri from uh, Panic at the Disco. Um, so it wouldn't be a surprise for her to have a lead single with a feature, obviously this person being Post Malone. <clears throat> but I, I also wouldn't be surprised if those 14 tally marks symbolize the 14th track. So, but I think it's safe to say it's either one of the two. It's either The Smallest Man Who Ever Lived or it is Fortnite. I guess we'll have to wait probably until Friday to figure out which one it's going to be. Um, you also could see on the calendar that on 420, which is Saturday, she wrote down record store day, which don't know exactly what that means, but maybe she's planning to go buy her albums at the record store. <laughs> we'll have to find out. Um, but I want to go back to this two o'clock thing, because as I said, the very first clock that was shown in the video was set at 2 p.m. Then another clock, when they get to the calendar, is also set at 2 p.m. And apparently during her like Spotify installation exhibit in Los Angeles, there were clocks set at two o'clock. And I just don't know what this means. Does it mean that there's, it's a double album? Does it mean that something is coming at two o'clock? You know, we had the Midnight's 3 a.m. version where she dropped all those additional songs at 3 a.m. Maybe this is the 2 a.m. Who knows, but there is something significant around the two o'clock and we'll just have to wait to find out what that is because I still do not know. Um, speaking of the library installation thing at the Grove, so there was this, it, I mean, it, it was like a pop-up library where fans could go and see like lyrics written on like parchment paper and it did look like a library. There was like books and shelves and everything. Um, and she had some lyrics, as I mentioned, on display. One of the lyrics, it was like an open book with, it looked like almost a veil, like a wedding veil kind of underneath it. And the lyrics said, um, uh, well, there was one that said, one less temptress, one less dagger to sharpen. And then another one said, even statues crumble if they're made to wait. And a lot of people think, especially with the addition of the veil that's underneath there and all that stuff, a lot of people think that this is alluding to the fact that Taylor was with Joe for six years and it seems as if she maybe wanted to get married and he did not, or he was pushing it off. Um, so that's interesting. There's also these library card catalog boxes where um, people could like write things down, but there were, there's 72 boxes. And again, Taylor does nothing randomly especially something like this, where she is purposely putting something to promote her album. Everything has a meaning, everything has a purpose. A lot of people think that the 72 boxes um, are symbolizing 72 months, which equal six years, which is how long Taylor and Joe were together. So she's just always thinking ahead. Another little clue is there was um, a lot of sculptures that were kind of around in the library installation. One of the statues um, symbolized Diana of Ephesus. I hope I'm saying that right. Which is the goddess of childbirth and fertility and the goddess of the moon. And actually somebody on Twitter um, found or like did some more research and tweeted, quote, the original statue of Diana crumbled while waiting to be shipped to London in the sixth 
century due to years of neglect, succumbing to the passage of time and the elements, which could mean this is maybe, again, symbolizing how Taylor felt in her relationship with Joe, that she was waiting and waiting and waiting for something that never ended up happening. Um, I mean, there's just so much to break down. Like it's honestly blowing my mind. Another fan spotted that there was a um, globe in the installation with a nail, a nail straight through the state of Florida. Now we know that Taylor has a song on the album called Florida, three exclamation points featuring Florence and the Machine. A lot of fans are speculating that this is quote, like the nail in the coffin so that this, this, Florida song could be about kind of like the the nail in the coffin of their relationship and sort of it being officially over. Again, so much to read into, so much to analyze. And I feel like it's only going to be when we actually get the album that we then figure out what all these different clues mean. Um, There's also been like an Apple Music puzzle going on where basically every day um, in one of Taylor's songs that are in her uh, Apple playlists, there's... Um, like a little clue where parts of the lyrics are capitalized that that spell out something. So like, I think the first day the song was glitch and it spelled out the word hereby. And then there was another day where it's a different song spelled out something else. Anyway, so far as of the time of recording, the words that we have for this puzzle are hereby conduct this post. And a lot of people think the next word is going to be mortem. Like, an autopsy, that that may be what this is going to spell out. And what this is going to symbolize is that this album is basically a, a post-mortem, so something that happens after a death, um, on her relationship with Joe, which isn't a surprise, again, because we know this is a breakup album. We know this is going to be her reflecting on these on this time of her life. But there's just so much to follow. There's so much to break down. I would love to know in the comments all of your thoughts on the Easter eggs, on everything we talked about. Are there anything, is there anything that I've missed that I haven't talked about that you've spotted on the internet? Like, please, please share them in the comments. We are so close. Basically, just over 24 hours until we're going to get to hear the album for the first time. I'll be staying up. I hope you'll be staying up too to listen so that we can all react to the album together and enjoy it because it's going to be great. As always, please subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.